So this is a short video designed to explain how to use dynamics in Maya and in particular we're going to explore hard and passive rigid bodies, sorry, active and passive rigid bodies. And anyone who's tried to animate a bouncing ball in Maya will know that keyframe, an keyframe animation isn't particularly easy and it takes a long time to master it and get it right. But if you use the physics engines within Maya, which is what we're going to do today, you can actually get a much quicker result. So let's go ahead and create a ground plane first of all. So I'm going to go to create polygon primitives plane and create a ground plane like that. And actually what I probably ought to do is reset my settings. So let's just, um, I'll just hit Z and then let's do that again. Create polygon primitives plane and this time I'll go to the options box, go edit, reset settings and then just create a plane again. I'm going to scale it, make it nice and big and there we go. I've got a, um, a, a ground plane. Um, so we'll name this ground because you always want to name everything in Maya. So let's call that ground. And now let's create some dice as uh, so we're going to animate some dice falling. So I'm going to go ahead and go create polygon primitives cube. I'll open up the options box, edit reset settings and go create. And now we've got uh, uh, a cube. Let's move it, um, let's move it up into the air. And let's call this die one, die one. Always want to name stuff properly in Maya. Um, and let's do just a little bit of UB mapping just to make this a little bit more interesting. Um, so let's go to the two sided view over here on the left hand side of the screen. And it's called, uh, that. that's opening up by default, that's opening up the outliner but I actually want the UV editor so I'm going to go to panels UV editor and there it is and that shows me the UVs of the dice now without going into a whole lot of detail on what UV mapping is what this is showing you is essentially an unwrapped cube if this was a Christmas present and you were trying to wrap up your cube with wrapping paper this is the minimum amount of paper that you would need to wrap up the cube accurately so if we go to Google and search for a dice material, we want something that is going to map onto this to spare us doing a whole lot of work. So let's try and do that now. So I'm going to go to Google and search for dice material and then go to images. And actually let's not search for that, that's not going to help us. Let's try dice texture map instead. There we go, that's what we want. And now I can look at these and I can see that for my purposes here, this one isn't going to help me because it's the wrong shape, right? We want that shape. So instead, I can use that one or that one will also do me. So let's try that one. Uh, and I'm just selecting random stuff and I hope I'm not infringing massively anybody's copyright, but since this is a free tutorial, I'm not going to worry too much about it other than to thank Moparscape for the image that I'm about to use. I'm going to right click, save image as, um, and we're going to save it as a JPEG. I'm going to give it a better name. Let's call this Dice Mat. Uh, save it as a JPEG. And now I'm actually in the wrong project here. It's saving it to the wrong place. So I want to go to projects. Uh, you can see I've got a whole bunch of projects here. But let's go to Dynamics Dice and open it up and go to the source images folder and that's where I want to save it. And just to be sure that I'm in the right place in Maya, let's just go back to Maya and go file set project and make sure that I am in fact setting my pro have set my project correctly because if I haven't then it will cause a lot of trouble. So let's go down to dice dom dynamics dice. There we go. And let's set that. So now in theory uh, that material should be in the right folder. So let's now apply a simple texture. So I'm going to go right click. Uh, let's actually just make sure that this is all in the window correctly. Um, I'll try right clicking up here. No, it's not going to work. Hold on. I want you to be able to see this. Okay, assign favorite material Lambert. There, great. You can just see that in the window. Assign favorite material Lambert. That comes in as Lambert 5. That's because I've already created a couple of Lamberts. So I'm going to call this um, dice shader. You always want to name everything properly. And now let's search on the little checkered flag here. Uh, create 
a, a open up the create render node window click on file click on the little yellow folder and that will take us to dice mat in our source images folder as long of course as we correctly set our project click open and there we go as if by magic it already works and the reason it already works is because these um, we, we selected a texture map that was already entirely aligned with the unwrapped cube in our UV editor just to show you what would happen if they weren't aligned if I right click and select UVs and then drag select these guys and move them I'm in the move tool here if I move those around you'll see that moving the UVs off the texture map will cause all kinds of trouble so I'm just gonna hit Z and go back to my cube I'm gonna right click on it I'm gonna select object mode so that I can just select it as an object um, and I've got my dice um, now I'm probably gonna to want to bevel this because it doesn't look very nice the way it is so let me just go to polygons so I'm um, to the to the modeling menu that is used to be called poly polygons now it's called modeling in 2016 um, probably something different in 2017 and no doubt 2018 as well uh, let's go to mesh edit mesh bevel so not mesh but edit mesh bevel let's click on bevel and we've got this helpful little menu so if I take the fraction down to 0.1 and segments to 3 I get a nice smooth bevel on my dice so there we go so that's all good now let's um, just go to the channel box there it's called die 1 if I do control D press W to move just move that to one side I've now got die 1 and die 2 so let's move I'm going to shift select them move them above the table uh, sorry not the table the, the the plane that we've got here on the ground and I'm just going to throw them off their axis a little bit so rotate them so they're slightly at an angle and now let's explore um, active and passive rigid bodies now the logic behind this is that when these dice hit the ground uh, we want them to bounce so the dice are what's called an active rigid body and the ground will be a passive rigid body so let's go to frame one let's just set our timeline to 100 frames it should be enough let's go to frame one and let's make these uh, sorry, I'm just going to press minus on my keyboard so that that um, selector is a bit smaller. And shift select the other dice. And now let's go to the effects menu in 2016. It used to be something different, but it's effects in 2016. And now let's go to fields solvers, create active rigid body, and click on that. And now what will happen is absolutely nothing and the reason that nothing happened nothing has happened is because we haven't applied any gravity yet so let's go ahead and do that field solvers gravity and now watch what happens so the dice land on the table or whatever it is we've created the ground plane and they go through it because we have to turn this the surface why can't I select it there we go the ground into a passive rigid body so let's go field solvers passive rigid body and now if I press play look what happens so now the dice will will roll down and hit the ground and this is a sort of illustration of of, of the amazing power of using the physics engine in Maya and how you can get in a sense results much much faster than you can by traditional keyframe animation now of course if you want to adjust these settings it's physics based you can't keyframe this as such although you can in a way I'll show you how in a minute so you're gonna to have to go into the um, uh, the tabs into the rigid body and start adjusting these settings bounciness damping impulse and so on uh, in order to get different results so I encourage you to play around with those and see what kind of results you can get now if you actually wanted to manually adjust these keyframes what you would do is bake out your curves and to do that, um, to actually create um, uh, curves like you could edit in normal keyframe animation, what you do is you go, you s make sure the dice is selected, and then go edit, keys, bake simulation. Let's open up the options box, edit reset settings, and you'll notice that in the options box, um, the sample by 
uh, window here is by default set to one. And what that's going to do is give us keys on every single keyframe, which is really a bit unmanageable. It's really too many. So I'm going to set sample by to two. And that way we'll get keys on every second keyframe, which is a bit easier to, to deal with. Make sure you save your work before you do this, because baking often makes Maya crash. And then go bake. And now what we'll do, what we end up with, is keys on every second keyframe on these dice. So if I press, if I go to my, um, my animation view, my typical animation view, which would be uh, three pane split top, where up here is the perspective view. Oh, well, actually, this would probably be the camera view, but I haven't created a camera yet. But down here in this window, we want the graph editor. So that's panels, panel, graph editor. And there you go. If I press A in the graph editor, I can see, come along, there we go. A, I can see all my keyframes. And I can now edit those and do whatever I want with it. And if I go to Windows Outliner, I can actually get rid of, I can get rid of the gravity field there because I don't need that anymore. So... Uh, what I have now are keyframes. So, for example, if let's say I wanted one of the dice to bounce, say that that one there. Say I don't like the rotation on that. I can go in and find the rotation. Mm, there we go. Rotate X, say, because that's a little bit sudden, right? What's going on there? So you see, I can adjust these. Uh, what I could do. Let's say I want it to rotate, so maybe that's my extreme position. And let's say I just wanted to get rid of those. Move that like that. So you see, what I can do here is basically adjust those keyframes manually. So I can, at this point, I can basically override the simulation uh, and, and, and adjust it manually. I can make the dice stop earlier. I could make this dice, I mean, this, this die have a slightly less, you can see here in Rotate X in that one, that's all happening a little bit suddenly. So there's a lot you can do by baking out your curves and then you can, you can make manual corrections. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to use um, uh, active and passive rigid bodies in Maya to make fast work of a simple operation like the bouncing ball, or in this case, the falling dice. Um, there's a whole world of fun with this. You'll find in most studios that this, these operations are now, in fact, done in Houdini, but, la but Maya still has very powerful tools for doing this kind of thing, and they're well worth exploring.